uh, arterial uh, puncture. Uh, I will start with uh, historical perspectives. Uh, the first one who invented this uh, technique was in 1929 was uh, Werner Forsman. He performed the first human cardiac catheterization by cannulating one of his own arm veins by a, with a urinary catheter. Uh, he put the catheter in his uh, anticubital vein, then walked to the X-ray suit and advanced the catheter into the right ventricle under telescopic guidance, proving that venous catheterization could be safely performed. And he won uh, the Nobel Prize in 1956 for this uh, invention. Uh, in 1947, Stig Radner successfully used the cut down radial artery axis to perform arterography. Then in 1958, uh, Stones performed the first selective coronary angiogram using tracheal artery cut down. Uh, this Stones approach or tracheal artery axis to a surgical cut down persisted as a predominant method of coronary arteriography for many years. Until uh, Seldinger came in 1933, which is a Swedish radiologist, he developed a method of direct arterial puncture, obviating the need for surgical cut down. And as you see, all of them are uh, radiologists, not uh, cardiologists. And then, um, then Melvin Jodkins, a radiologist at the University of Oregon, USA, he performed the first transfemoral coronary arteriogram. Okay, let's start about the anatomy and the access technique. We have the femoral artery axis. What is the origin of the femoral artery? It originates from the iliac artery as the common femoral artery passing beneath the inguinal ligament and has two branches, superficial femoral and profunda femoris. As the arterial axis is performed, of course, uh, through the common femoral artery. What is the exact site? It is below the hypogastric artery, which is the inferior hypogastric artery, the last branch of the internal iliac and above the femoral bifurcation. It's better uh, to be here. Here is the left gastric, uh, sorry, the hypogastric artery, the last branch of the internal iliac, and here is the bifurcation. It is better to be done in this area, which is uh, named the safe zone. So it is better to put the catheter and the sheath into the safe zone, and it is associated with a lower risk of vascular complications. Why? Because if I make a superior arteriotomy above the hypogastric artery, this is an uncompressible location. I don't have a femoral head to compress, so I have an increased risk of intraperitoneal retroperitoneal hematoma, which is lethal. And also, the more inferior arteriotomy, which at or below the femoral bifurcation, this is increased the risk of hematoma and pseudoaneurysm. Why? Because both the superficial femoral artery and profunda femoris are smaller in diameter. And this has increased the risk of sheath related traumatic complications because of increased relative size of the puncture. So here, here is the sheath, you could see. So this is a high puncture, this is above the level of the inferior hypogastric arch. And in this, this is not uh, working. So the image on uh, your uh, right, this is low puncture. As you could see, the post bifurcation post branches of the common femoral artery superficial and profunda femoris. And the image on the left, you could see a high puncture because the sheath is above the level of the inferior hypogastric artery. Uh, this is one of our cases. As we started here, you could see that we inject. Here is the image. We are above the level of the bifurcation of the femoral artery and below the level of the inferior hypogastric artery. So this is a safe zone to put the puncture. Also here, you could see we are away from the bifurcation and below the inferior hypogastric artery. Here, here is the inferior hypogastric and here is the bifurcation and this is the safer zone to put your needle. So how to facilitate arteriotomy into the safe zone? You have two techniques. You can use femoral head fluoroscopy and you will use, uh, could use ultrasound. Uh, I, I found that uh, many centers use 100% in their cases ultrasound guided uh, puncture, which is not uh, common in Egypt, I don't know in other countries, but we don't do it uh, ultrasound guided uh, only in uh, difficult cases. So uh, femoral head fluoroscopy, uh, you put an external marker over the middle third of the femoral head under fluoroscopy, entering the skin with the needle two finger breadth below the marker, this increases the likelihood of common femoral arteriotomy. This is my needle, and you could see it is approximately not in the middle third, it is at 
an angle 75, and it will discuss it uh, now. Uh, this is a paper uh, published in 2019, routine use of fluoroscopic guidance and upfront femoral angiography. The results in reduced femoral complications. They concluded that femoral intervention can be performed safely with very low access related complications when you use fluoroscopy to guide your function. Also, this is another paper in 2018, and they are defining the fluoroscopic landmark for common femoral artery puncture during cardiac catheterization. In this study, they analyzed 114 CD angiogram, and they found that the proximal third of the uh, femoral head and uh, external iliac artery medial were closer approximation to the inguinal ligament than the external internal iliac artery origin. And they concluded that um, the angle at fifth, uh, 75 is more accurate target for successful common femoral artery puncture than angle 50. You could see here the angles. If it is 50, it means it is the middle third of the femoral head, but this paper proved that it is better to be lateral, more lateral than this at uh, angle 75, and you would be inside the common femoral away from the inferior the gastric artery. This is the first method, is to use the fluoroscopy to guide your function. The second method is the ultrasound guidance. This is the most reliable way to ensure femoral arteriotomy into the safe zone, is to use the ultrasound. Ultrasound guided arterial access allows for direct visualization of common femoral artery with identification of the hypogastric artery superiorly and the femoral artery bifurcation inferiorly. As you could see here, there is a visual femoral artery, profunda and femoral vein, and you could use the ultrasound to puncture the common femoral artery. This is a paper in 2010, real-time ultrasound, guidance facilitated femoral artery access and reduced vascular complications. This is a first trial. It uh, a randomized control trial in 1,004 patients, and they access complication 30 days, as they concluded uh, that uh, ultrasound guidance improved the common femoral artery cannulation only in patients with high common femoral artery bifurcation, but reduced the number of attempts, time to access, risk of vein function, and vascular complications. So, what is the point of um, the high uh, puncture? Sorry, the high bifurcation. This is a paper discussing this cell at this point, assessment of femoral artery bifurcation level. They assess the level of the bifurcation in 579 patients, and they found that the normal are present in 66%, but you can high and very high in about 26 and 8%, which is about third, one third of the patients. This is the normal, this is a very high bifurcation, and this is high bifurcation, and this is the normal, which is common in two thirds of the patients. So the problem of the ultrasound guidance that maybe you are sure you are inside the common femoral, but this is high bifurcation. So it is better to use both the fluoroscopic guidance and the ultrasound guidance. This is a systematic review of ultrasound guided catheterization of the femoral artery, four trials of 1,422 patients, and they found that use of ultrasound for femoral artery catheterization decreases the life-threatening vascular complications and improves first-pass success rate. Also, this is in and 19 a letter for cardiology using an ultrasound, meta-analysis of five randomized uh, control trials of 784 uh, patients, and this uh, concluded that ultrasound-guided femoral artery access for endovascular pursuit is safe and effective for visualizing the femoral artery during the vascular access, and neuro intervention should consider a low threshold for its use, especially for patients with channeling anatomy or a high risk of bleeding complication, that this is upcoming in the neural intervention to use the ultrasound. Ultrasound guidance in femoral artery catheterization, also a systematic uh, review in 1,553 patients, and they concluded that ultrasound guidance during femoral artery is associated with decreased risk of vascular complications, uh, primarily deriving from by a reduction in local hematomas. This is the femoral artery axis. Another axis is the radial artery axis. A radial artery branch from the brachial artery, most common in the cavitial fossa. The diameter range from two to four millimeter in most patients, and somewhat larger in men than in women. Unlike the femoral artery, you can cannulate the radial artery anyway along its course, but is most commonly accessed just proximal to styloid process of the radius bone. There is a controversial area regarding radial artery access. 
necessity of testing for dual circulation to the hand before arteriotomy. This is the modified Allen's uh, test, how to test the dual circulation. First, the patient hand is elevated and the face is clenched. This is a laser in drainage of blood from the bulb. Then you have to simultaneous manual pressure to the radial and the ulnar. Then patient hand is open and pressure on the ulnar artery is released. So you have to calculate the time. Time to flushing of the palm. If it's returned within five seconds, this is normal. If it took between six to eight, 10 seconds, intermediate. And if it takes more than 10 seconds, it is abnormal. There is another updated version to use an assist to use the plasmography waveform. You have to put um, the finger probe on the thumb, but I don't think that the cardiologist uses. I asked my colleagues, did you use an assist? They said no, they perform it immediately. And this is a trial transradial coronary catheterization and intervention across the whole spectrum of an assist results. Um, you have to uh, 203 patients with uh, 83 had normal Allen's test, 60 had intermediate, and 60 had abnormal. If you had abnormal, you have to do the radial axis, and they tried on the series in the three groups, and they suggesting the safety and feasibility of the transradial axis across the whole spectrum of the Allen's test results. So there is no need to do such a test. Okay, it is better to use palpation or to use ultrasound guidance. This is the RASP uh, trial in 698 patients. Um, using the ultrasound um, makes the attempts reduced and the first pass functional rate improved and the number of difficult access procedures was decreased with ultrasound guidance. Uh, despite the overall favorable results of ultrasound guidance for both radial and femoral artery access, its use is not routine in most, at most hospitals probably owing to cost and the training considerations. Okay, uh, trans uh, femoral arteriotomy versus trans radial arteriotomy. This is published in the Lancet, radial versus femoral artery axis for coronary angiography. This is the Rival study. And the other one is reference stick study. And this is the steamy radial study. And this is the matrix study. Most of the studies says there is no difference between using the trans femoral and trans radial in the coronary angiography. A coronary treatment, uh, except the matrix uh, showed that there is uh, some uh, difference in the complications between using the femoral and using the radial in favor, of course, for the radial axis. But most of the studies said there is no difference regarding the complications. This is a systematic review comparison of transradial and transfemoral approaches for continuous coronary intervention in 76 studies in 761,000 patients. Uh, they said that transradial is associated with less risk of bleeding than transfemoral artery. Also, this one in 2015, radial versus uh, femoral in 17,133 patients. They said that the radial arteries uh, decreases the mortality, major adverse cardiovascular events than uh, femoral approach. Okay, what about the complications of the arterial puncture and the role of interventional radiologist in the treatment? Most common complications are the hematoma. It's uh, less than 1% and it's treated by endovascular and you have to uh, reserve surgery for rare selected cases. Also pseudoaneurysm from 0.2 to 0.5 after diagnostic and about 2 to 8% after angioplasty. And this is treated percutaneously and you have to reserve also surgery for rare selected cases. You can find um, some complication, it's rare to have an anterior venous fistula to less than 0.1 by section 0.5% and distal embolization less than 0.5%. So nerve damage and abscess and necrosis is very rare. Uh, just as a case here, you have an um, extravasation of contrast. You could see it here. And it is better to treat it by a covered uh, stent by an uh, interventional radiologist, not by surgeon. This is an pseudo aneurysm. You could see it. It is better to treat it percutaneously using a thrombin injection, but you have to be cautious about the needle. You have to put the needle in the center of the pseudo aneurysm in order to avoid exacerbation of the thrombin into the parent artery. So you have to be away from the neck of this pseudo aneurysm. Some 
interventional radiologists use a balloon to inflate it in the parent artery to prevent the reflux of the thrombin into the parent artery. This is another case, we don't have a pointer to show, with uh, arterial venous fistula, so it is better also to be treated by a covered stent. This is a case of uh, dissection, following chronia and the plasty, you put a balloon, then you put a covered stent. So, we heard about the different uh, routes of uh, vascular uh, arteriotomy, and we, we talked about the complications, and now about the hemostasis, this is the first uh, job of the resident to do compression. Every resident uh, of IR have passed two or three years of his residency doing uh, compression. Uh, for post femoral and radial artery access, hemostasis commonly accomplished by, through manual compression, two to three centimeters superior to the skin entry against the underlying head of the femur bone. So if you have a high a puncture, you will not have a femoral head to compress, you will have a little bit of hematoma. So you have to be uh, punctured, be sure that you are inside the common femoral artery. There are several devices that are available to assist femoral hemostasis. Femoral devices can be passive devices and active closure devices. Passive devices which express and produce the flow agonist material and mechanical compression devices that replaces manual compression. Passive uh, which means hemostasis pads and active like uh, NG seal, and also we have radial hemostasis devices, which you see are bent from uh, Feroma. So, is there an association between use of bleeding avoidance strategies and risk of periprocedural bleeding among patients underlying percutaneous coronary intervention? Uh, this is a study in uh, uh, 15,152,000 uh, patients. And they found uh, that vascular closure device was associated with significantly lower bleeding rates than manual compression. Also, this is a ZARC closure randomized control trial in 3,015 patients. They found that um, in patients undergoing transfemoral femoral coronary angiography, vascular closure device were not inferior to manual compression. This study said that the same same between the two the techniques. And this is comparison of vascular closure devices versus manual compression after femoral artery puncture in women in 1,395 uh, female patients. They found that um, uh, vascular closure device provided comparable safety while time to anesthesia to reduce use with vascular closure devices. This is a meta-analysis in 16,868 patients on the safety of vascular closure devices for femoral artery puncture side hemostasis and they said that uh, vascular closure devices decrease the risk of hematomas uh, following uh, angiography. Uh, this is accurate trial impact of femoral vascular closure devices and angiothrombotic therapy on exercise bleeding in acute coronary syndromes. Um, and we, uh, in this accurate trial, they define the major uh, bleeding uh, as the bleeding requiring intervention or surgical correction or hematoma more than five centimeter and they um, randomized the patient for manual compression and for vascular closure device, as they concluded that both minimize rates of major associated uh, puncture bleeding. So what about the future directions? The future now is talking about the ulnar artery. Ulnar artery axis has been considered owing to its fairly straight course up the arm. However, the ulnar artery is situated deeper in the forearm than the radial artery, and runs alongside the ulnar nerve, which makes access more difficult without ultrasound guidance. And I don't think that the cardiologist will use uh, the ultrasound, so I think we, the radiologist, we could do it. In other words, injury to the ulnar nerve is a risk as forearm hematoma. Uh, this is a paper uh, published uh, about trans ulnar versus transradial approach for coronary angiography and angioplasty. Uh, they also randomized the patient. Um, for 111 for radial and 105 for ulnar, and they found that both approaches are safe and feasible. Also, this uh, paper in 2016, trans ulnar versus trans radial for coronary angiography meta analysis in 2744 patients, and they found that trans ulnar compared to trans radial has similar efficacy and safety. Thank you.